Hey, 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 it's Tia, baby. And I am back with another video. I know that I said that I was going to do it all the way up to her birthday, but I got sidetracked because I have a 20-page paper that is um, that is due. And as my final paper, um, it's due in May, but my professor apparently wanted to do a rough draft of it and that's due on the 24th. So I still have a long ways to go. So that's what I've been working on. And then also it's my spring break. So I'm using this time to spend time with my son. So I'm, you know, prioritizing myself as much as I can. But I did do what I said I was gonna do. I did it. I did it back to back videos for the past two weeks. Um, so I'm just going to read the last 17 pages of this book. And then I'm going to get back to my paper. <clears throat> Selena's mainstream album, Dreaming of You, was relate released in the summer of 1995. The album combined songs in both Spanish and English. It was Selena's biggest musical success yet debuting at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart, the first time for any Hispanic singer. The album sold over 175,000 copies on its release date, a record for any commercial singer, woman singer, and it sold 2 million copies in one year alone. I heard songs from that album everywhere I went, and it was torture. Anytime I heard Selena's voice come on on the radio, I had to change the station. If I heard one of the songs in a restaurant, I wouldn't want to make a scene by walking out, but I'll pretend not to hear it. I got really good at just sitting there and acting like I couldn't hear any music at all. Watching the music video for I Could Fall In Love, one of the hit tracks from that album was even worse. It was like slashing the wounds open all over again. It took me over a year to really begin clawing my way out of that trench of despair. For a long time, I had kept everything in the house just the way it was, including Selena's belongings. But little by little, I started putting a few things away. Some days walking by them made me feel good because I had such fond, loving memories of Selena. Other times, though, I would see something of hers and sink into a depression that lasted for days, consumed as I was by grief. I had to find a way to move on. With John... I decided to finally pursue a dream that would have made Selena proud. I formed a rock band that included my old friend and former La Mafia member Rudy Martinez on bass. Joe Ojeda, who played keyboard with us in Los Dinos, and Jesse Esquivel on drums. Dictator and ABCDFG would probably have helped me out with producing, but I decided that I needed to make the album independently. I was finally going to try to, to create the record that I had been hearing my in my head, and I was determined to work with people who could get me that sound. I put the band together in 1998, the Chris Perez band, not my idea to name it that, but the guys insisted, went to Los Angeles to record our music at Henson Studio. The most unlikely song on the on the album was one that I had written about Selena a few months earlier called Best I Can. That song cataloged a lot of the despair I was feeling and my struggle to go on. I remember that I was sitting alone in the living room when I wrote that, barefoot and in my sweats. It was during that time of the day that Selena loved so much when the sun was setting and it hit a certain spot on our living room floor. We always put our feet in that spot of, of the sunlight to warm them. I picked up my guitar and the music just flowed out of my of my fingers. Part of me knew that it was a good song, but another part of me didn't want any anyone else to hear it. I was reluctant to reveal my emotions to the world, much less use my personal tragedy to sell a record. It was bad enough to be known as the widower of the slain queen of the Hano music or whatever the media was calling me. I didn't want to also have to hear people saying, yeah, well, that record got made only because he wrote about Selena. 
He's just pulling on hit heartstrings by putting that out, one out. When I finished writing the song, I felt okay, but bad at the same time. I was split in two. Great songs deserve to be heard, but this one would be mine alone. I put down my guitar and then started writing the lyrics. Those two came out fully formed, with, which is rare, not just for me, but for any songwriter. Usually I had to sit and think about a song before I can start writing, then rewrite the lyrics over and over again until they seem perfect. With this song, however, it was as if Selena's spirit was there to guide me as I wrote. I can't erase this lonely heart that keeps on remembering. Every day I live, I live with you and with all the things we never do. Heaven holds a place for souls like mine. Try to leave my troubled past behind. You know it's so damn hard letting go. Standing here holding my heart in my hands. Yes, I am trying to live every day the best I can. After I finished writing Best I Can, I worked on this music for another of our songs, Solo Do. Joe had written the words and left them on a sheet of paper on my mixing board. He had been thinking of turning it into a romantic ballad, but I picked it up and decided to make it into a rock song. By the time John and Joe came over that night, I had two songs to show them. I played solo through for them first, and we look, we worked on that one together for a while. Then I said, I also wrote this other thing, but be before I show it to you, I want you to know that I don't want to ever put this song out. I got out the lyrics, sat down with my guitar, and started playing best I can. Wow. They both said, when I finish, we got to at least do a demo, even if you don't want to release it. We were recorded best I can with studio gear, but with no intentions of including it on the album. When we arrived in Los Angeles and started recording, however, I was outvoted by the other band members that met and by the people at our label, Hollywood Records, who had accidentally heard the demo and loved the song more than any other. Together, they all managed to look talk me into it. Selena always supported you 100%, Joe said. She would have loved it if you wrote this song for her and that you're going ahead with, her, with your dream to have a rock band. There was another song about Selena on the album called Another Day. I don't know why I was cool with sharing that song, but not best I can, especially since Another Day was about how I, how much I love Selena. It was just one of those personal, maybe irrational feelings. The thing is, making music has never been about making money for me. I had never tried to see the road in front of me. I just wanted to write songs that people could hear and relate to their own experiences. Whenever situations they're going through, I ended up deciding to release Best I Can, not only because it was a good song and the other band members wanted it on the album, but because I thought that hearing it might help others who had lost loved ones. That's what music has always been about for me, as it was for Selena, connecting with other people in ways that you can't through words alone. It took us a couple of months to record the CD, in the final production, I ended up working with another childhood friend, bass guitarist Adriel Ramirez and drummer Alex Tamis, as well as with my friends John and Joe. I also brought in musicians from other genres to acquire the unique sound I was after. These include percussionists Louis Conte, horn players from the Voodoo Glow Skulls, Mariachi, Sol, Sol de Mexico and other and even members of the band Cheap Trick. If we succeeded in the U.S. rock market, I knew we'd be conquering new territory as U.S. born Latin musicians. When Resurrection was released in 1999, it included nine tracks in Spanish and six in English. I wanted this rock, Latin rock album to break new cultural new cultural grounds in the sense that it's Bilingual mix and re reflected the daily reality for many Hispanic Americans who were growing up the way Selena and I did, had. In a bold move, our, rec our label released two different singles at the time, at the same time to both English and Spanish radio stations. The rock song Resurrection as the first English language, language single and Por Que De Fueste, a ballad that I knew would appeal to Spanish speaking listeners. I started going to different radio stations and working with 
promoters in the U.S. and aboard. Ali hitting the road to do the interviews and shows brought me closer to Selena because now I was experiencing that life again. What's more, because the Chris Perez band carried my name and because I had written or co-written nine of the songs in the album, I was the one the media was interested in now. Anytime I felt tired or irritable from marketing the music, I would remember how Selena would get up every day and do whatever it took to help her family, support and love me, care for our house, reach out to fans and bring her music to the world. I never fully realized how much Selena was juggling or how much care she had until I started going on the road and revealing my own vulnerabilities in the music I was writing. I used to say to her, just ignore what people say. They're always going to be going to be some negativity and you can't worry about it or take it personally. Now that I was feeling the streams of negative remarks, sometimes I realized how tough and determined Selena really was. I vowed not to let her down. Our album was amply made, named This Was My Personal Resurrection. I decided I will live and work in a way that made Selena proud of me from now on. A few months after I returned from the promotional tour for the resurrection, I got a call early one morning from my friend Robert Trevino, who worked for the Gibson Guitars. Congratulations, Chris, he said. Dude, do you know what time it is? I said, blinking hard at the clock. Yeah, I, but I wanted to be the first to congratulate you. For what? I said, what are you talking about? You're, you're nominated for a Grammy, Robert said. Shut up, I said. Somebody told me you can't be nominated for a Grammy until you've got three or four CDs. That's impossible. Old man, sorry, he said. I guess I screwed up. Where did you hear this anyway? I asked. I'm on, on the website. The nominations came out today. Robert said, well, you must have read it wrong. I said, we hung up, but of course I had to go and check it out for myself. Sure enough, there was my name on the list. I called Robert right back to apologize. You're right. We were nominated. We la He laughed. I told you, Pendero. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter because look who we're up against. I reminded him, we're never going to win. Still, it's an honor to be nominated, right? I called everyone in the band and told them the news. We decided to fly out to Los Angeles for the ceremony and just watch the show and enjoy the ride. When we walked into the theater, I saw ABCDFG and his bandmates, Cruz Martinez. They were dressed up in these weird outfits. I wore back, background clothes, a nice suit, and I brought my whole band when I saw ABCDFG dressed like that, along with all of these other artists whose music I admire so much, I suddenly felt like I shouldn't be there at all. Whoever nominated us must have made a mistake. These other people had put a lot of a lot of of albums. I had I hadn't worked nearly hard enough just to deserve this honor, but we were but we were here. So I said hello to ABCDFG and then went to my seat. I was, was seated near the stage, and ABC of G was sitting up on the back, on the bleachers, on the side. As I looked at him, I wondered if ABC of G was remembering like I was Selena's Grammy war and her speech that night. I wondered if Selena was watching us right now. I hope that she was. I knew this would make her so proud to see both her brother and me in these seats. She'd be laughing that laugh of hers too. She. If she saw how nervous I was, you see how it feels. I could imagine her saying, at least you don't have to worry about tripping over your dress. My category came up first. When the MC started listing the nominees for Best Latin Rock Alternative Performance for 1999, of course I knew that my band wasn't going to win. These other musicians were so great, so artistic, and not only, and I own CDs by every every one of them, because I love their music so much. It was a pretty safe bet that they couldn't say the same thing about my CD. They probably didn't even know who I was. Then they opened the envelope and said, the winner is, in my head, I heard Cafe Tabuka's Reves Yo Soy. I love that album and knew they, discovered, they deserved the award. I was getting ready to stand up and clap for the cool badass band Cafe Tabuka to Cuba when in my peripheral vision I saw John jump up. 
I looked over and saw the other guys in my in my band stand up as well. I was still sitting down. Then they all started clapping and gesturing me to get go on up stage. We won, man. We won. John said. I stood up and took my walk to the podium, knowing that if she could see me now, Selena would be smiling. In the end, and all I did was make the best record I could with friends and musicians I admired. I never thought we'd win a Grammy, but as Selena always told the children she spoke to around the, the country, never, nothing is impossible if you work hard. The, this, that includes picking up the pieces of your life. Selena has continued to have profound impact on the world. Dreaming of You was listed as one of the best-selling records of 1995 by Billboard magazine. That jump into the top slot made Selena one of the best-selling women musical artists in history. Only Janet Jackson had done better at that time, at that point in time. After the albums released, the songs I Could Fall in Love and Dreaming of You topped the charts worldwide as well. In her honor, Selena's family established the Selena Foundation, a charitable organization with the mission of helping children in crisis, the poor and the elderly. The foundation raises money through donations and the sale of Selena's albums and, and items from Q Productions, which also operates the Selena Museum in Corpus Christi. Thousands of people still travel to the Corpus Christi from all over the U.S. and Latin America each year to visit the museum, Selena's grave, and our old home. On March 27, 1997, the movie Selena was released, directed by Gregory Nava, and starring Jennifer Lopez as Selena and John Seda in Mind Row. The movie introduced a new generation of fans to Selena's life and music. Six years later, we held a tribute concert in Houston Valiant Stadium called Selena Vive, Vive asking stars like Gloria Stefan, Talia Sor Soraya, and other Latin performers to play, to play Selena's music as a tribute to her and to the more than 65,000 people who attended. The show was recorded for television and became one of the most viewed Spanish language TV shows in the U.S. And on March 16, 2011, the United States Post Office released a Latin legend stamp in memory of Selena and other Latin um, music greats like Tito Puente and C Cecilia Cruz. And Celia Cruz, my life has gone on more than anything. I am grateful to Selena for teaching me the meaning of love. I am fortunate enough to be able to marry again and have children. I I was fortunate enough to be able to marry again and have children. I wish that I could have had a family with Selena as we had always planned. Still, I know that Selena was the one who made this possible for me. She showed me how to drop my guard and embrace life. I used to talk on the phone with my family frequently, but it wasn't until I married Selena that I truly opened my heart. Today, I say I love you to my friends and family every chance I get because I know that there may not be another tomorrow with these people who are so dear to me. I know that if Selena were here, she'll tell me that she loved me and not to worry because I'll see her again one day. Selena inspired me and she inspired the world. She provided her fans with everything they needed, from dance tunes to soulful ballads, through her own life and through her music. Selena showed those who were struggling, met migrant workers, school children, housewives with domineering husbands, teens rebelling against their conservative parents. That persistence and hard work paid off and that you can be ambitious without leaving your family or cherished values behind. This message especially resonated with Hispanic Americans, many of whom, like, like Dictator, had experienced racism during their lives simply for speaking Spanish or just looking like they could. Selena's fans felt like they knew her because she opened her heart to the world and let herself be known. She was one of us and one of ours, and we felt like Selena was always going to be here. We watched her grow, and we saw her star rise. Selena re represented the idea that it is possible to go places that that most people, that most of us only dream about. Selena I'm still dreaming of you. I just want to tell you, hi everyone, it's me, Bumpy. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I know a lot of y'all have been missing me for 28 years. Wow, that's a long time, my goodness. 
but I want to thank y'all for your support towards me and my family after all these years. I bet y'all are wondering about how I'm doing over here. I'm doing great. <laughs> I know it's sad for some of y'all knowing I wasn't here to see my dreams come true, but trust me, y'all, I have never been happier. I wish I could tell my family I miss them so much. Thank you to the fans for keeping my memory alive, and please continue your education. Nowadays, you can't even get a job at McDonald's without a high school diploma, so I think education is very important. Also to my mama, will you tell her I said hello and that I sent her a big hug and kiss? <laughs> Y'all, I gotta go, but you take care now, okay? Okay, you take care.